There's actually some news in Dub Nation land within the Golden State Warriors, and we're going to talk about that next. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com. Use the promo code Locked on. You can follow me, Cyrus Sotsis, on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. And speaking of price picks, I'm curious to see how my picks came out. I'm recording this in the middle of game five of the NBA Finals, so I do not know uh, at the time of this recording who is winning, who's going to win. Uh, so chances are when you're watching or listening to this, we'll either know who the next world champion is, and we can officially no longer say defending world champions when it comes to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, Or there might be game six and then uh, the Miami Heat uh, could be in pursuit of a a rather uh, unique uh, accomplishment, being just a second team in NBA history to come back from a 3-1 deficit to win the NBA finals. But they also might be the first one to not have the NBA help them out in the process. But um, um, it would be nice to have a rim shot right there. Uh, So uh, Anthony Slater of The Athletic. Uh, published a story, uh, I believe, early this morning um, that had a few interesting new tidbits that I wanted to get to on today's show. Uh, First and foremost is the fact that um, he merely confirmed what was said on this show last week. Uh, And it's becoming a bit of a point of pride here at Locked On Warriors that uh, we sometimes break news here. We're sometimes... uh, First to reveal what's going on, and last week, if you if you watch or listen to every show, uh, you heard us talking about the fact that um, nobody knows for sure who's calling the shots with the Golden State Warriors. And uh, I was on with my good friend Larry Kruger last week. I sometimes go on his show. If you're in the Bay Area, you know him from uh, his decades in sports talk radio. Uh, he now has a great YouTube channel, uh, The Krug Show. Strongly recommend checking it out. And I'm lucky enough to be invited on that uh, program uh, uh, pretty frequently to discuss the Golden State Warriors. And when I was on his show last week, he, uh, someone on the program brought up an interesting point, which is who exactly is calling the shots? Bob Myers stepped down. And um, since then, uh, Joe Lacob uh, said that uh, the search for his replacement could be within the organization might be coming from outside the organization. Uh, But then in that exact same press conference and maybe in answering the exact same question, uh, he also hinted that it was likely going to be from within. Uh, And then, so, so my sources told me last week that the way it's working right now within the organization is that Mike Dunleavy Jr., who was one of the assistant GMs, not the only one, uh, Larry Harris is also another person with the assistant GM title uh, on his resume, but Mike Dunleavy Jr., uh, is is basically the interim GM unofficially. Uh, Joe's son, Kirk Lakeup, is also in, involved in personnel. Uh, my prediction is Kirk will, will be handed the president of basketball operations title. Mike Dunleavy Jr. will be promoted to general manager of the Golden State Warriors. And that way, uh, you know, I mean, Bob Myers loomed large. Uh, he was a, 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 an instrumental figure in the dynasty, uh, he was a very influential figure within the Golden State Warriors and the NBA. And um, so in all likelihood, with his departure, you're not going to see someone take on both the titles that Bob Myers held. Uh, Bob Myers was both, the, was both the president of basketball operations and the GM. So what's likely going to happen now is Kirk Lacob will take one of those titles, president of basketball operations, and then Mike Dunleavy Jr. will take the other title, which is general manager. And as I've mentioned before, uh, the reasons for this, again, Joe lo- oh, clearly loves his son, Kirk, but he also sees him as uh, someone who is uh, intelligent enough to handle 
uh, a personnel decision making position. But at the same time, he's also smart enough to understand how the optics may not look so great having your son take over as the GM. So by giving uh, Kirk the president title, president of basketball operations, and then giving Dunleavy Jr. the GM title, you're not only, at least from an image perspective, uh, shielding yourself from accusations of nepotism, uh, and and also you're not having Kirk being the, fra- the, the face of the organization when it comes to media relations. Uh, that Dunleavy Jr. will be the one ho- holding the press conferences. Dunleavy Jr. will be the one answering uh, questions from the media pertaining to personnel decisions. Um, yet despite the fact that at, at the way the, the organization is currently constructed with Myers departing, where Dunleavy Jr. is your, is is the interim GM, and again, that's not official. There, there have been no title changes going on with the organization yet. I'm merely uh, saying that for contextual purposes. Um, despite the fact, again, that Dunleavy Jr. is going to be your interim GM, despite the fact that Kirk Lego uh, has a, a position of influence in deciding uh, matters like free agents, uh, draft picks, any potential trades, um, the, final sh- uh, the final decision... The shot caller with this organization right now is Joe Laco. Everything runs through him. Um, so when when the the, the draft uh, commences in less than ten days, if I have my math correct, um, we, we still don't know for sure like who's going to make that pick. Um, but what we do know is that the person who makes that final call on the pick, regardless of what the Warriors do with it, will be Joe Laco. Joe Laco, at least at this moment is the shot caller for the Golden State Warriors. He is making the decisions. Um, You have to respect how confident he is. You have to respect the fact that uh, he wants to win. Not every owner has the level of enthusiasm that a Joe Lacob has in terms of wanting to win, in terms of a desire to to reach the pinnacle of sports. In in the NBA, that is being a world champion, uh, winning the NBA Finals. Um, and on a side note, by the way, uh, every once in a while, I get someone get, who gets a little critical when I use the word world champion uh, pertaining to uh, the, the title winner in the NBA. This That is in no way, shape or form me uh, boasting of, uh, uh, largely coming from Amer- American arrogance or uh, elitism, anything like that, because I would never, for example, call uh you know like the mls champion a world champion but in the nba the reason why i I routinely call them world champions is because the nba is attracting all of the world's most talented basketball players there there is no uh you know all-time great out there not in the nba right now um in soccer it's next to impossible to to use a title like that world champion because you have so many different leagues so many different countries all the best players are not in one, uh, you know, top of the class organization like the NBA. They're spread out. Um, so in the NBA, though, they have all the best players in the world. So I call them the world champions simply because if you're the winning team in the NBA, you're the best in the world. I, I, I don't think there's any dispute in that. So regardless, the Warriors have an owner who, who desperately wants to win world championships. And if you're a member of Dub Nation, you're stoked on that. Uh, it is good to have an owner who wants to win, plain and simple. And you don't see that always in sports. As, as crazy as a statement as that may be, it's very true. Some owners have bigger desires in place. Some owners are all about ego. Some owners are all about uh, actually making money in a business where you really should not be getting into this to make money. You should be getting into this to uh, support your community and to create a team that's going to win. And and. And on a side note, if your team wins, you do make money. Joe Laco, Peter Gruber, they've learned that over the years in terms of the, the approximately close to a billion dollars they make every postseason on top of what they're already making in revenue with these deep postseason runs. So have to be stoked, despite the fact that Joe Laco right now, um, as the owner, is also the ultimate shot caller, you still have to be stoked, at least, that the owner desperately wants to win and that's going to lead to the second piece of information i'm going to get into in just a minute here uh pertaining to joe lacob um that was revealed in the anthony slater story and this was a really good one and you'll you'll understand what i mean uh in just a moment after i give some love to one of our official sponsors of locked on warriors and that is better help 
And today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA and get on your way to being your best self. And look, if there's one thing that I will absolutely uh, uh, take to the, the, the top of the mountain in terms of a fight that I will not relinquish, that is the battle against any stigma pertaining to mental health and seeking help for it. There is nothing wrong with trying to improve your mental health, with trying to seek happiness. And sometimes you need help in terms of, of therapy. And that's where better help comes to play. Um, regardless of whatever struggles you're dealing with, maybe it's just the mundaneness of life. Maybe it's circumstantial. Maybe there's something actually, uh, 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 there's a, some sort of physical uh, issue going on that is causing some sort of, some form of depression or anxiety, but it might not be severe enough where you need medicine for it. Maybe you just need a therapeutic route, and that's where BetterHelp can come to play. The therapists at BetterHelp uh, offer online uh, uh, services for you where it's flexible. You don't have to leave your home, um, and all you have to do is just fill out a brief questionnaire, and you get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can also switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Uh, and if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Again, it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash NBA. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day for the everydayers. <clears throat> At this moment, I don't know who the guest is for tomorrow's show, but just follow the program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. That's where we announce all our show times who the guest is. I decided to record this show very last minute. Uh, Kylan Mills was originally supposed to join me today, as she normally does every Monday and Friday. Uh, her mom is visiting, and I'm all about family. So uh, she, she's she's having some quality family time with mom visiting in town. She'll be joining this program on Wednesday this week, in addition to Friday, where we'll recap the NBA Finals, talk all about, uh, obviously, the Golden State Warriors. I'd love to get her perspective on the, the, the information that was uh, published in Anthony Slater's new story, courtesy of The Athletic. And I, gotta, I do want to give my, my uh, give a tip of the cap to Anthony Slater, uh, give him some kudos. He is one of the reporters out there who isn't afraid to ask the hard questions, um, who asks the right questions, in my humble opinion. Uh, so kudos, Anthony. You do, you do a good job, man. So props. So um, one thing that came out in his story uh, that I think is – tremendous news. There's actually two more pieces of information besides revealing who's actually calling the shots for the Warriors. And, and again, just to summarize what I just spent 10 minutes talking about, Joe Lake is going to be going to be calling the final shots uh, with Mike Dunleavy Jr. serving as your interim GM unofficially. That's not an official title yet. Uh, his son, Kirk Lake, obviously involved as well. He'll likely become the president of basketball operations. But there were two additional things that really stuck out in this story. Actually, there were uh, three other things, but two of them that were tremendously positive. And one thing that, that Joe Lacob was attributed as in this story is that Lacob has said that he will not let money be an issue in terms of constructing a winning roster. That's huge. Because as if you are an everydayer of this show, you've heard me say time and time and again, and all I'm doing is just repeating what Joe Lacob has said before, which is that he does not want payroll to exceed $400 million, which is a lot of money. Now, granted, the, the Warriors organization, starting with uh, Joe Lacob, Peter Gruber and company, they're filthy rich, all right? It, regardless of what the payroll figure is, they can more than easily afford it. OK, so I'm not sitting here making an argument saying 400 million is plenty. Uh, how dare anyone criticize ownership? if They don't want to go over that amount. They easily can go over that amount. I have expressed time and time and again that if you're going to be an owner of a sports team, get into it, preparing to spend to win. Otherwise, l let someone else buy the team. I mean, there's plenty of people out there, plenty of billionaires out there who want to get involved in sports ownership. So if you're not going to be willing to 
to to break the bank to put together the best roster possible, find someone else who's, who's up for the task. But Joe Lacob came out in this story and said that money is not an issue. Now, what that means, who knows? It, it, he didn't provide. There were no specifics provided in terms of what that meant exactly. But what it could mean, just the possibility of this being a reality, is highly encouraging. That if the Warriors have to go over $400 million to put together a contending team, they at least might be willing to do it. That's huge. Okay, that is monumental. Because right now, one of the biggest challenges with this Warriors roster, in terms of improving it so they could still be potentially world championship contenders next year, is trying to stay under $400 million. Because right now, if the Warriors just kept things the way they were, all right, and, and when I say keep things the way they were, that they the way they they were are that means uh, Draymond coming back, either opting in or signing a new deal that's still going to pay him close to the twenty seven million uh, that that he's uh, currently scheduled to make next year. And this includes Dante Divincenzo not being back in the picture again. That would shock me if Dante Divincenzo came back just because chances are he's going to be getting offers far in excess of the $4 million and change he would make uh, with his second year of his deal. He has a player option. He's in all likelihood going to opt out. Um, so this is taking that into consideration. The, you know, you factor in all the contracts you currently have. You factor in the value of the 19th pick. You factor in the value of all the veteran minimum contracts you're going to have to uh, use to fill out your roster. The, the 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 budget total, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to come out to approximately four hundred ninety million dollars. This takes into account luxury tax penalties that the Warriors have been paying now for a number of years. So, to 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 field a a competitive team next year, and to have to take into account that you have to cut out ninety million dollars somewhere, is an incredibly difficult challenge. That seems insurmountable. I, I don't know how the Warriors, in all honesty, would do it. I proposed a trade that could that could bring back a, a player like Carl Anthony Towns while you're also shaving $90 million. But again, you'd need the Tim Wolves to go along with it. Who knows if the Warriors want Carl Anthony Towns? Um, but your options are very limited if you're trying to keep that $400 million amount. The fact that Joe Lacob said um, that that at least hinted that they would go over that amount um, is huge. So that is a reason to be optimistic. Now, another thing that was revealed in the story, um, and some people thought this was the angle of the whole piece. This story had a lot of nuggets of information in it. Uh, one thing that came out, and I don't think this is news at all, but I'll, I'll quickly say it, is that um, Laka reportedly does not see Jordan Poole and Draymond Green playing together as being an issue. And in all honesty, even though like that was highlighted in the story, um, I don't know who thought that would be an issue. I mean, look, look, the punch was obviously a factor last year. And, and in terms of why it was a factor, you could break it down uh, to a myriad of reasons. You could cite the fact that Jordan Poole maybe psychologically was affected by the by one of his own teammates cold cocking him in a practice. I think the the bigger issue from that punch was Draymond Green being forced to uh, not be his true self as a leader. He was forced to suppress the volume of his speech, the context of his speech. Um, you know, he's admitted that it took months before he was able to be the vocal leader that the team was accustomed to him being, uh, largely because he was just trying to repair his own image and he was trying to repair relationships. Um, from that from that violent act that he was a part of. So um, despite that, look, uh, Draymond Green and Jordan Poole, they've always had lockers right next to each other. Um, they don't hate each other. Uh, they do actually get along, especially as teammates. And yeah, it, I just did not see that as news. But nonetheless, in this same story, uh, it was reported that the team will not see any issues keeping those two players together. So for what it's worth, um, that was revealed in the Slater piece. And if Jordan Poole stays next year, um, it doesn't mean that Draymond Green has to leave 
or vice versa. They, they can coexist. Um, now, there is one last piece of massively huge uh, information in the story that it made me happy uh, because this is something I wasn't sure about. Um, I've been wondering for since the, the offseason began, since the team lost game six to the Lakers, what kind of owner is Joe Lacob? Like, because this is a very defining moment for the team uh, and for their leadership in terms of where they're going next. I mean, they are at a, a metaphorical fork in the road right now. And what Lacob had to say about that is incredibly encouraging. And I'll tell you what he said next after I give some love to another one of our longtime sponsors, and that is Prize Picks. Uh, and again, I'm curious to know how I did tonight. I'm recording this in the middle of the NBA Finals. I have no idea who won, but I'll tell you what I bet. Uh, and this is how Prize Picks works you're betting over unders, you're, you, and it's a minimum of two players, maximum of six players. You can win up to 25 times the money you put in with a six person bet you could win some serious cash folks with prize picks and the premise is simple again two to six players and it's all about over unders is Nikola Jokic going to score more or less than 29 and a half points tonight I bet the over on that is Jimmy Butler going to score more or less than 24 and a half points tonight I bet the over, uh, and don't quote me on those numbers being exact. I can't remember if it was 24 or 25, whatever. But the point is, that's how it works. And it's not just points. You can bet over-unders on rebounds, assists, and it doesn't have to just be the NBA either. You can bet on Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer. Uh, when the NFL's back, obviously football, hockey, uh, it's fun. It's a, fu it's, it's a fun way to play uh, uh, daily fantasy sports. And one of the best parts is that if you're in California, it's legal. And you don't have to worry about sketchy wire services to get your money back. The, the withdrawals are fast and easy. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. If you deposit 100 bucks, Price Picks gives you 100 bucks. And if all, if all you have is 50 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever you put in, they will match it. So when you start playing your first time with prize picks, you're playing with double what you put in. But don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, wrapping things up here with one final segment of Locked On Warriors. You can follow me, Cyrus Otzes, on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. So here to me was the golden nugget of the story that I read today. And again, props one more time to Anthony Slater for giving me a whole show worth of content uh, from your piece. Joel Lacob is reportedly open to any and all options in terms of what this team is going to do next. One of my big concerns with the future of the Golden State Warriors was how much they were going to let sentimentality play into roster decisions. And by the way, I just uh, I just got note here that the Denver Nuggets uh, are the world champions. Congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. Um, let's hope, even though the odds are slim, that the Golden State Warriors reclaim that title next year. Uh, but for tonight, congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. I just got that news. Um, in the middle of what I was going to be looking for. And by the way, Christian Braun, uh, interesting, 2022 NCAA National Champion, 2023 World Champion in the NBA. So kudos uh, to Christian Braun of the Nuggets uh, for winning the World Championship. Uh, they've won the Warriors Invitational. Hopefully next year the, the Warriors will reclaim what is rightfully theirs. I, I, I say that in jest. Um, but uh, uh, nonetheless, Joe Lake of, uh, you know, I've been wondering, is he going to be all about semantics? Is he, I mean, not semantics. Is he going to be all about nostalgia? Is he going to be all about loyalty to his core three? Even though Clay Thompson has regressed as a player, even though Draymond Green still close to the peak of his powers, but not quite there. Um, there's going to be some tough decisions to be made here when it comes to the, the future of the Warriors. Is $43 million justifiable to pay to Clay Thompson? I don't think so. Um, you know, and so... The question is, you know, like, what is this team going to do? Because 
the team is currently constructed couldn't get past the second round of the playoffs. So if you're gonna if you're gonna just keep running this thing back, you cannot expect world championships. You can you can expect to probably fill Chase Center for a few more years just because you know this fan base loves the core three that much. Um, but you are no longer going to be a world championship contender if you keep this team the way it is. Uh, Clay Thompson can no longer be your second best player if you want to be a world championship contender. So as part of the report, as part of that story, is that every single member of the Golden State Warriors who is not named Stephen Curry is going to be available in trade talks. That obviously includes Jordan Poole, but the fact that Everyone, according to Anthony Slater in his piece in The Athletic, every single player on the roster is available in trade talks. Now, the obvious trade piece is Jordan Poole. Liability on defense. Inefficient on offense. But still a score, even though those points are largely empty. But nonetheless, now maybe Klay Thompson is available. Right. I, the, the only other player on this roster who I desperately don't want traded is Kavon Looney. I just don't see what the point is for the amount of money he makes, for what he brings to the table. Why trade him? Right. But, um, and, and, and on a personal level, I do still see a bright future for this team with Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. I do. But at the same time, if, if a trade is on the table where you might have to move those two pieces, but you're getting, a superstar caliber player back, you got to at least consider it. Because right now, the bottom line for the Warriors, I do believe strongly that with the right moves, you can still be a world title contender. I, I really do believe that. You have Stephen Curry on this roster. You do have some other tremendous pieces like Andrew Wiggins, Gary Payton II, uh, Kevon Looney, as I mentioned. If Draymond Green stays, sorry, I have allergies, by the way. I apologize for the just uh, <laughs> rubbing my nose there a lot. Um, but my point is, is that you have pieces in place, but you need more. What you need, really, there's three things that this team vitally needs, in my humble opinion. You need size, okay? You cannot have a team of hobbits succeeding in the NBA, and that's what the Warriors are right now. They are a diminutive team, and you cannot be a tiny team like this and not have an excess amount of superstar talent and compete for a world championship. You need size. They got to be bigger, especially when you're looking at the, the standard bearer for success being the Denver Nuggets. You need someone to match up to Nikola Jokic and Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon is 6'10", so you need size. I don't think there's there's any dispute there. This team has to get bigger next year. That's number one. Number two is depth. Now, I actually thought the Warriors had depth last year, but Kerr decided uh, in a very obtuse manner to not utilize Moody and Kaminga, two players that would have been serviceable and would have given you the depth that you needed. He just, because of his gut feeling, which <laughs> is insane, uh, didn't play them for a, lo a lot of the season. And so regardless, whether you already have that depth, whether you need to get that depth with smart veteran minimum contracts, you need depth. This Warriors team and all their championship runs relied on that adage, strength in numbers. you got to get some help for, for Stephen Curry. And number three is a second score to alleviate the scoring pressure off of Stephen Curry. You need a second score. Klay Thompson used to have that role. He's no longer that guy. I still believe Klay Thompson can be serviceable. Okay. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not trying to hate on him. I'm not trying to be super negative on him, but the reality is he is no longer a viable second option for a title contending team. Is he a fourth or fifth option? Maybe, um, but he's taken a step back defensively. Uh, he cannot create his own shot. Um, you know, so he's a liability in a lot of ways. And so this team needs a, a second dominant score. I don't think Andrew Wiggins, Andrew Wiggins is a, is a great player, but I don't know if you can count on him for being your your number two uh, uh, source of points offensively, I don't. I just don't know if he can he can beat that kind of score. I know he was a volume scorer in Minnesota, but the his role here with the Warriors is so defensive oriented, and that takes so much energy that I just don't know if you can count on Wiggins to give you the defense that he's given you while also giving you twenty five points points a game offensively. 
Um, so those are the three things. And the fact that Lacob is open to trading anyone that isn't Stephen Curry is tremendous news, is phenomenal news, because it tells me that Joe Lacob is, in fact, following the Eddie D school of sports ownership. Cut your losses before your assets lose their value. Okay. Take sentimentality out of the equation. Take feelings out of the equation. If you want to be a world title contending team, cut your losses before those losses drag down your ship. So great piece by Anthony Slater. Uh, and And it was, and it was just filled with a lot of encouraging news about this Warriors team. And we'll see what happens. Congrats to the Denver Nuggets. Follow me on Twitter at DogSurfRoadShow. Follow the program on Twitter at Locked on Dubs. Thank you, everyone, for joining me as always. Um, and we'll be back at it soon. Take care, everyone. Peace. You.